Greetings viewers, this is CP666 signing on for a special video. I'm sure you know what it's going to be about. Too bad I can't get any focus on it. That's right, I have reached 400 subscribers, and this is... this I reached this a while, but I just haven't really gotten around to making a video. Now, that also is not quite true. I did make a video. I actually shot a video of this. This Technics S... RSTR 180, but I do not like the way that that video came out at all. Um, it was really quite unfortunate. I was hoping that that was going to go well, but it didn't. And so I'm left searching for something else to make a video about. Now I could. My other option was to make a teardown video of this Toshiba SDV 392 VCR DVD combo, but that's not really all that interesting. Um, I could make a video of that Midland weather radio that's sitting over there, but again, that's probably not all too interesting. Uh, maybe a printer video or a computer video, but there's not really much interesting having to do with computers. Oh, wait! Yes, there is. Some of you may remember my box of stuff video, as I'm busily trying to just break absolutely everything there is about me. Uh, there's the box of stuff. There's some stuff missing from it. One of the things is actually installed over here. See the Magster One Touch 2 100 gigabyte drive sitting right there. It's installed, working fine, using it to store backups. However, that will not be the purpose of today's video. The purpose of today's video is going to actually be of the other thing, which I've also shot a video of in the past, but again, I didn't like the way that it came out, and there's a lot of things I've done with it since that video. This is a Sony Vio, as you could probably tell. And it is a PCG FR130, or if we take a look at the flip side, it is a PCG 9H4L. Both of those, as far as I can tell, are accurate model names. This thing was received with all of that bunch, and it is a rather chunky laptop, but it works just fine. And I'm pretty sure that some of you also have heard in that video that there were some things wrong with it. Namely, the power jack on the rear was actually busted, and it is still busted. I have not actually fixed it yet. However, I used a method to fix it that only I could ever come up with. I took a pair of tweezers and pinched the two pins that are in there closer together. You see, the way that this is designed is it's got the outer sleeve, of course, and then it's also got a little... Uh, Oh, good heavens. It's got a uh, insert on the inside, a little circular insert that holds these two pins. The circular insert actually broke, probably because the power supply that was being used is not exactly intended for this laptop. It's a replacement power supply. But I pinched those two together, and to my great amazement, it started charging the battery, and it came up working just fine. Taking a look at the other ports that we've got here, we've got three USB ports. They are only USB 1.1. But it is nice to see three, as opposed to, I don't know, the two that my T42 had. The T42 is actually also newer than this machine. A proprietary, as far as I can tell, composite video output. It takes a dongle. I might have the dongle, if it's not, of course, a proprietary dongle. I might have it. I might even try that and see what happens. V90 modem. Fan. Cooling fan. Actually, that's a cooling exhaust fan. 15-pin D-sub video. VGA, if you must. Printer port. You notice that there's no serial port. We've got the onboard Ethernet, which is a real tech job. Mono microphone, stereo headphone, iLink S400. And this is curious. It's actually got a 3Com. What is this thing? Office Connect XJack 10100 Ethernet card installed in it in one of the PCMCIA card slots. I will not. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because this is slightly flaky, but this does actually work. Not under Windows, but it does actually work. Well, not properly under Windows. I'll get into that. And it's got an honest-to-goodness floppy drive. I hate it when people interrupt me when I'm trying to do something. On this side, we've got the uh, battery. Just underneath this door. And we've got... This is an odd oddity. Oh, there's the Kensington lock. This is an oddity. You will not find another one of these. At least, I'm, I'm not sure you'd find another one of these. With a DVD dual air rewritable drive. This was replaced at some point, as you can probably also tell. It's not quite original, it doesn't fill the whole space, probably because the original drive failed or an upgrade was needed, but a dual air DVD drive seems like an odd thing to find in such an old laptop. 
But you'll notice something else missing. Where's the PS2 port? So it's got a floppy drive, but no PS2 port. Usually it's the other way around. The system will have a PS2 port, but no floppy drive. Or, it would be like a weenie modern computer, it doesn't have either of them. So that was an odd thing that I noticed. However, most of the rest of the laptop is normal, except for one thing, although I'd like to point out something else. Looks like there is some heat damage done to this laptop down here. I'm not quite sure what that's all about. Doesn't seem to affect its operation, however. The other oddity is in the indicator lights. You can see we've got the hard drive indicator and our lock keyboard lock indicators. There's no light on the power button. There's the power light. But the interesting one is the battery indicator. It is off when the battery is fully charged. It is blinking when the battery is charging, blinking orange. And it stays solidly lit when the battery is discharging, when it's running on battery. Seems kind of opposite of what you would normally expect. Maybe it's because the battery is uh, a little bit past the point where I would call it bad, but uh, I'd like to know why it does that. Maybe it's not normal, I don't know. It does have stereo speakers, one and two, and uh, it has a nice keyboard, very nice keyboard, much better than the chiclet junk you can get these days, like that sitting over there. And it does have a track pad, but it is a decent trackpad, I would say. It's not one of those mush boards that, again, modern laptops have, but I'm not even going to get into that. It's got, oh good heavens, I think that's a 14-inch display. It's capable of 1280 by 1024 resolution, uh, but I've got it running at 1024 by 768 because that just looks better on this particular display. Maybe it is a 1024 by 768 native resolution display, I don't know. But it's not a bad display. Um, other specifications include a mobile AMD Athlon XP 2000 Plus. That's right, that makes this the only AMD laptop that I have in my possession presently, and only one of two that I have owned ever. The first one was a rather large hunk of garbage, Toshiba Satellite L300D040. I'm sure you've heard about that if you've been watching my channel for a while. And if you want to, you can go back and watch a couple videos I made about that machine. I'm sure they exist. I might link a few in the video description. It's got 512 megabytes of memory. That's DDR. Probably upgrade that at some point. It's got an 80 gigabyte Toshiba hard drive. I'm not sure if that's original or not, but of course, I can't actually get the drive out because somebody stripped the screw for the hard drive cage. I'm going to have to figure out some creative way of getting that open. Forgot to mention, here's the power supply. It's a uh, Vanson switching mode regulated power supply capable of between 15 and 20 volts at 6 amps maximum, or for 22 and 24 at 5 amps maximum. Uh, it is set, this particular pin is center pin positive. I'm not sure if all of them were like that that came with this. I'm, I'm not sure if it came with more than one pin. But I only got the one, and it's fortunately the one that I needed, or the one that works. So maybe I'll try and get my Rocketfish supply to work with this thing, I'm not sure. But that Rocketfish supply is actually kind of a piece of crap, so probably not. I also noticed something else about this. I'm not sure if that's a cooling fan or what that is. Um, but there's a sticker in there. Yep, that is. A brushless DC fan. I could read it, just barely. So this thing has actually got a cooling fan. And that's probably what's making the hissing noise whenever I plug this thing in. That's actually fairly cool. I think it's the only laptop power supply I've ever seen with a cooling fan. Alright, enough of my yakking. Let's go ahead and power this thing up. The power supply is on, which only leaves one thing. That is to turn the laptop on. I'm also going to plug in the Ethernet cable, because I do want to be able to go online with this. I'm going to use both Ethernet cards in this video. However, I'm going to use the Realtek with Linux, because it's the only one that works with Linux. The 3Com does not, because of an I.O. hardware conflict, as far as I can tell. I might have to resolve that, maybe by plugging it into a different slot. I'm not quite sure, but I'll use the Realtek for that, because we're going to start Linux first. We'll turn it on. It appears as though it is actually plugged in and receiving power, which is good. Take a look at the BIOS. Now you can see your information. I will need to check and see if there's an updated BIOS for this thing, but maybe there isn't. You can see the machine name and the serial number. The, uh, I'm not sure what the UUID actually stands for. Is for. Here you can see the primary master, which is the 80 gigabyte Toshiba hard drive. Secondary master, floppy drive is enabled. 
parallel port is an ECP mode. We've got our screen expansion, which basically enables the scaler and text mode. Network booting is disabled. I have it showing the vinyl logo, but I've got the volume off because it's kind of obnoxious. It's got a Phoenix BIOS on it. I saw that. I think it's a Phoenix BIOS XP or a Phoenix BIOS 4.0 or something like that. Here we can see our grab a boot menu. We'll boot into Ubuntu Linux first. And we'll take a look at that running. Alright, go ahead and log in here. And we'll take a look at our desktop. I've customized it a bit, uh, but I haven't really done much with Linux because everything that I needed was actually already installed. So, <laughs> probably benefit from having an extra half a gigabyte of memory. Maybe it would benefit from having two gigs. I don't know if I could put two gigs in this. Supposedly the limit's one. Um, but I'll have to see about that. T42 doesn't eat its RAM, and that's DDR, so... Alright, and if we take... We're going to take a look at some system tools. Maybe I should run an update on this and see if there are any updates. This thing does take a long time to download updates. Or download the uh, package lists. It's not even downloading updates. It's just taking forever. Here we go. We're getting somewhere now. Or not. And it says it's finished, but yet it's not finished. Okay. That makes a whole lot of sense. There are updates. There's an update for Firefox. There's a GTK front end. And uh, some... What I would assume are updates for the base software. Might as well install that. Probably gonna ask me for my password. Oh, that figures. It wants me to reboot. I'll restart it later because... Well, I will restart it later. I just want to take a look. Let's hope that Firefox actually works. I just want to quickly take a look at a website, and I want to show you that the network does indeed happen to work. Just fine. Let's see. I don't know if there's much really to look at here. Let's see. Is there something I can download? There's a registry file on this page. So we'll take a look here. Scroll down, and we can... It's a small file, but we can download this. I could show you that it does, in fact, actually seem to function. Maybe I will not show you that it doesn't, in fact, seem to function. Oh, boy. Okay, where is... Downloads. There's the downloads. Save it from there. And you can see... Very quickly, 580 bytes, it's saved it. So it does, in fact, seem to work. Of course, there's not really much to working, really. You can see I've actually put a page up about this laptop. Let's take some pictures. All right. This is not fast either, as you can probably tell. Well, I'm not quite sure what it's doing. Usually it's faster than this. There's obviously something running in the background that shouldn't be. And it's not usually this slow. I'm not sure what it thinks it's doing. It has one indicator light. I'm not sure if it's supposed to have two or if it's just that one. I'm not sure why this thing is so slow. This is actually kind of ridiculous. Maybe I should force it to turn off and try again. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I turned it off and that's much better. I'm not quite sure what was going on the first time, but... Uh, that was weird. Huh. Again, it slowed down a bit. But that's probably because the antivirus and such are loading. It does actually have AV installed. It's just Microsoft Security Essentials. I'll probably install something else later. Um, because MSE actually kind of sucks. As you can see there, it actually does kind of suck. I'm not sure why it's uh, managed to turn itself off. It really is churning that hard drive, though. I wonder if maybe that's what was slowing it down, is it's stupid antivirus. Maybe I should just uninstall it and go without. There you can see Windows XP Professional version 2014, which is your indication that this is running the unofficial Service Pack 4, even though it still says Service Pack 3. And there are your specifications. Mobile AMD Athlon. I'm not sure why it says 383 megahertz. Maybe that's why it's so slow. It should be running at 1.6 gigahertz. And uh, 512 megs of RAM. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, this thing actually has uh, NVIDIA 
GeForce 4 420 Go graphics in it. And that's also got a VIA chipset. Again, there's not really much that I can demonstrate in Windows. You know, because it does work fine. I will run... I'm going to run the updater. Um, because I did that in Linux. And we'll see how that goes. I'm now using the other network card, so we'll see how well it works. And there's IE doing what IE does best. Not working. What a freaking surprise that is. <coughs> I think Netscape 3.0 is faster than this is. This is starting to get ridiculous. You are doing nothing. What the hell? What a waste of my... Alright. Here we go, finally. Took you long enough. Oh, that is spectacular. Okay, there we go. Not much network activity. Which probably indicates that it's not doing anything. If I had to guess. Alright, well, apart from taking forever, and then locking up like a boss, we do have one update, probably a definition update for security essentials, which I have a feeling that I will be uninstalling, because I have a feeling that it is the reason why everything is going so slow. What a piece of crap! Look at the size of that update. Definition update. That's hilarious. Definitions should be smaller than that. Some updates were, good job, Microsoft, good job, whatever, it's not important, I'm not going through that again, that is ridiculous. One thing that I notice is when you press the power button, it actually lights up the, uh, the battery light. I'm not quite sure why that is, maybe it's because it disconnects the AC adapter or something like that, I'm not sure. I'm also not sure why this is not responding to my clothes, my clothes request. Okay, I'm going to do something about this. And as you can probably tell, I removed security essentials, and it is amazing how much faster everything got after I did that. That's just sad, really. It is really sad. Obviously, Firefox is another piece of bloatware, but uh, whatever. It's better than Internet Explorer, so I guess there's one thing. Although, being better than Internet Explorer is not exactly... Uh, a very high thing to be. Let's see if it's actually managed to update itself yet. Maybe it'll download the update faster. That's what it's doing right now. There's my little show that this thing actually does work with the 3Com card. However, it does not seem to have a network indication, you know, network activity indicator on the card itself, which is kind of interesting. And I think really that's going to do it for this video. Uh, there's not really much that I need to show you. It wasn't really an interesting video, however, my latest addition to the computer collection. Uh, I'll probably be upgrading the memory. Maybe I'll make a video of that, maybe I won't. Upgrading RAM in a computer is not exactly the most interesting thing in the world. Um, but uh, thanks for 400 subscribers, and here's to 400 more. Here's to many, many, many more videos. I will not stop making videos provided that you are all interested. And I am running out of battery on this particular iPod, so I might as well finish this right here. Thank you for watching. If you've got any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then. As a little add-on to this video, you can see there's some information about the battery itself. You know, there's a lot of information here, actually. Apparently it doesn't report the number of charge and discharge samples. That's not exactly correct. I'm pretty sure it's had more than zero. <laughs> 91.4% battery wear level. I'm not sure if that means it's... What would that be? 8.6%? Or if that's actually 91.4% worn down? Uh, it ap would appear as though that it would be the smaller number of the two, comparing the capacity value and the full charge capacity. I'm sorry, no, I'm considering the, comparing the full charge capacity and the design capacity. That's right. I'm looking at the wrong values there, so... Uh, see it's charging on AC power. It does run, and I'll unplug it here, but it's not the greatest. You can see that it will refresh. You can see it's already down to 99.8, and the light has come on. Indicate that we are discharging. There's our charge and discharge rate. You can see 
Wow, 45 minutes. That's a little bit high, I would assume. Zero millivolt. Oops. Zero millivolts voltage. That's kind of uh, weird. But it's amazing. I want to point out this out. It's amazing just how much faster the system runs after I installed Microsoft Security Essentials. I'm going to open up Firefox here and we'll see how it does. It might be a little bit slower now that it's running on battery. We'll open up, oh, I don't know, this is a decent video. Open up a YouTube video. It's going to play in the Flash Player because I've got HTML5 disabled. I had it disabled for a test, actually, but uh, this should do. It's not perfect, but videos actually will play at 360p now. Once it loads all of the rest of the extraneous junk on this page as it needs to load. Or doesn't need to load, depending on how charitable you feel. This is just a quick response to old 64 Globex video about disabling the caps lock key on his keyboard because... If you pause it, it'll catch up, and then you can just play, accidentally hitting it, and then it and plays I fine. As I looked at the various it's fine. I have, it's not perfect. Have it does get slow if there's a lot of movement. Between the A key and the caps lock key. But it could be a whole heck of a lot worse, and I would say that that's acceptable. There you can see our discharge statistics. It is definitely going down. You can see we've now only got about 11 minutes of battery. But I think I'm going to cut the video off. You don't need to see me testing this battery. So uh, there you go.